Hello my SOC universe and welcome to the review of match day 16 already in Serie A. A match day where Milan took top spot. Yay Milan! And it doesn't feel like it. I think the tide is turning definitely black and blue at this moment. Uh, mainly down to injuries and but also performances as of late and the other the black and blue teams being Atalanta having another huge weekend and I just said a midweek Atalanta and, and, and anyone I think after this week we firmly can say that Atalanta is back into the title race although Inter still are the firm favorites and Inter looking really strong at the moment uh, where I yeah I think in it is Inter is the team to beat despite Milan being up top but well, I don't trust Milan quite yet especially again with an injury uh, to care I am very optimistic in the sense that there is a January transfer window coming up but given how Milan has handled transfer windows and now that everyone knows they're looking for a center back and Milan is not willing to spend the money I'm not so sure. Uh, defense is the one thing where I'm really worried about them because Tomori and Kia, if that partnership can be up for the entire season, Milan is winning. Milan can go for the championship uh, regardless and you know, with the midfield, but I, I'm more uh, afraid that there will be other injuries coming soon. With Napoli, yeah, I think we also see that things are a little bit unraveling. The Osimhen injury is not one to be sniffed at, to be honest. Sorry for the uh, sounds from the laptop. So uh, that is a concern. And Inter looks just super strong. I, and what annoys me the, me, 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 me the most, that the uh, most inconsistent player for Milan over the past four years was Hakan Cialanoglu and suddenly for Inter he's hitting the heights he's scoring goals but he had those streaks at Milan too so there is some hope for this Milan fan that he might keep, keep, keep it up but I officially named him Vermin so let's see where, where this goes and yeah Atalanta I'm wearing Atalanta uh, they are Atalanta is awesome Atalanta is awesome uh, I think some of the best games this season, uh, or most of the best games this season, have all involved Atalanta, namely Atalanta against uh, Inter, Milan, and uh, against Napoli. And only at the Milan game they were uh, out; they were not the better team. So maybe that's some peg here for Milan. Talking already too much about the situation. Let's go in. Let's talk Milan. Uh, there's honestly not much to talk. Salernitana was the most. Uh, I just say, the most timid team I've seen in a long time show up at the San Siro playing Milan. Milan actually trying a, a, a kind of a second string lineup, a saving players for the big clash against Liverpool, which happens today. Uh, get an early goal, very nicely play th played through Leao in the fifth minute. Cassie uh, tap, 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 taps it in. And for, from that moment on, I knew, okay. Unless they really try to mess it up, uh, that's going to be a win. Because Salanitana, yes, there's a Ribery, but you have Salanitana in the back. Pellegri played and had to come come off, which is, you know, he wants, I think he is, a, send him back. I think he is, I really hope he proves me otherwise. But uh, but I think he was kind of, kind of, kind of both signing. Yes, you signed him, injured, but I'm not sure. If he's up for it, and then Salem Market with a really nice shot from a distance in the 18th makes it 2 0 at a time where probably should have already been three. And when he was there celebrating, held up Kia's jersey, which kind of shows the standing that Simon Kia has in this locker room. And that's why I am so worried about overall the performance for Milan without Simon Kia because he is kind of this. Uh, everyone talk, talks about Slatan. Kia is the other cornerstone there. Second half, Milan decided we are, we are not going to go for it. We're going to play this home safely. Salernitana is not going to threaten us. We're just going to get the win and we focus all our energies to Liverpool. That's at least how it seemed to me. And it was a little bit dis disappointing, but hey, it allowed me to unpack the parcel uh, with the Mallorca jersey. Uh, Roma Inter. Yeah, I was looking forward. I mean, I watched Bayern Dortmund. I had the other game on, but uh, to be honest... That game was an utter destruction of Roma, and it started with a direct corner from Charlotte Noglu. 
and then Jacko scores after John Oglio sees to make it 2-0 at that point. The game was out of reach for Roma, unfortunately. And uh, Dumfries then even gets a third one. And second half, Roma just wanted to damage control. Which kind of was brought up at the press conference afterwards, um, where Mourinho was asked, "Yeah, why didn't Roma go and uh, try to come back into the game?" And he basically said, "Well, it's a very difficult job, and that's why I'm paid way more than you are." Mourinho being Mourinho in many ways, and I still am very, not very convinced that Mourinho is the right man at Roma. I know you gotta give a coach some time, you know. I always say give a coach a season, let's see if something's building and then, yeah, but uh, it was not a good uh, uh, appointment, I gotta gotta say. Speaking of something spectacular, the evening game between Napoli and Atalanta, as I said, an amazing game, Uh, especially in the first half, I think Atalanta completely outclassed uh, Napoli for about 30 minutes or so. And that they only took a one in lead through Malinowski was a little bit flattering to Napoli. However, Napoli found, found themselves back and got an equalizer through Zielinski and right as it have Mertens, uh, of all people. The, you know, I, I really love Mr. Andres Mertens. Uh, he's, an ama- he's really an amazing player, but he's already, you know, more, he's turning into a substitute, a superstar player. But now, Ozeman is out and he's fully in there. So, um, he really did this well, and, and and I had a very hard time because I saw if Atalanta win this game, Milan will stay top top of the table. Not that I necessarily really wanted that to be honest, but I also know that, that the title race is gonna be really really tight because uh, Atalanta then is right up there with Napoli, um, which yeah makes things in, 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 in interesting. Atalanta is a really exciting team to watch. But on the other side, there's Napoli, that, a, a, a team that I really like. And if Milan is not winning it, I actually would like that Napoli wins the Scudetto because that's a team that has been knocking for uh, years now and kind of never made it, made, made, made it over the line. So kind of two hearts in there. So yeah, I kind of enjoyed that, that game swinging my allegiances back and forth. So Napoli have, have, have a 2-1 lead. And then for a um, few minutes... It really looked looked like that um, things might go Napoli's way and they pull out a win that no one really expected. Um, however, then uh, Diego Deme had to come, come off. Ilici um, and Lobotka came on. Then Ilicic uh, came on for Pessina, which is, I mean, the bench of Atalanta is also something. I mean, just change up the, the, the players. Whatever comes from the bench is an awesome player. Uh, gotta be said also. And yeah, Demiral Toloi, the, the center backs, Toloi passes it to Demiral, who runs into the box and slams it in, in, into that. Uh, it was a slight hint of offset, but it was just not. Uh, by, by, by the way, in the game, they showed for the first three goals, I think they showed always the offside line, which was so ridiculous because all of these goals were, there were no way that they're going to be offside. Maybe the Mertens one was, but you know, it, it, it was absolutely really ridiculous. But in any case, and then a few minutes later, uh, Remo Freuler, after Ilicic assist, makes it 3-2. Atalanta turned around again. And Atalanta again. I said the tide is turning black and blue, but Atalanta is playing kind of in a uh, reddish-pinkish tone, which I still, yeah, it made more sense here against Napoli than against Juve, but yeah, still not really, really li- uh, liking, especially if they have really nice uh, white away jerseys. Serie A jersey re- review. I'm hopeful that you get the first video on Sunday, I think. Um, looks very good and then Atalanta hang on and actually should have probably won one bit more as I said a perfect win the, with many with uh, two lead changes uh, it was a fun game and Atalanta is right in there uh, another 3-2 and then again Serie A scoring loads of goals Fiorentina winning the Apennine derby uh, if you don't know Italy I mean Fiorentina uh, Florence and Bologna basically connected through a highway on both sides of the Apennine the uh, mountain range, uh, basically the spine of the boot. So uh, they are kind of close together. It's uh, like a one hour drive between the two cities. Um, Fiorentina uh, running away with it. I mean, uh, first 1-0, then 3-1. It was a 1-1-1 one, one, one at the half. I really like those yellow Fiorentina jerseys, I gotta say. Uh, the most remarkable game of the weekend, and I only saw the winning goal. 
was Venezia against Verona, and you see Verona up there, and Venezia, yeah, maybe, maybe since the size Christia is not, uh, there. but Venezia had a 3 0 lead uh, with half an hour in. And like Lask uh, a few, two weeks ago, when they had a 3 0 lead at Sturm at halftime, Lask managed to only get a 3 3. Verona went all the way. Verona came all the way back and it was helped by a red card. Um, you know, there was an own goal for um, Verona that uh, Ceccaroni sent off, who had already scored the first goal. And then suddenly Verona take over. Caprari and uh, Giovanni uh, Sim Simeone um, scoring two goals, the last one from far outside. Uh, just one of those things. It was another derby, of course, the Veneto derby. So, uh, pretty big win there. Lazio winning 3-1 at South Sampdoria, with the Sampdoria boss being uh, sent, uh, being arrested afterwards for some uh, dealings, false bankruptcy and so on. And then Juve, another direct corner. Cuadrado, uh, for once, Juve completely dominant against Genoa and getting a 2-0 win there. And yesterday's game's Empoli getting a win over Udine. Udine... Not looking all that great, and Cagliari also getting a point, getting slowly out there uh, from, from 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 bottom. Uh, as, as I said, um, uh, if you look at the bottom, I mean, it's uh, Genoa and Salernitana seem kind of foregone conclusions. Cagliari might find themselves out there, but still uh, down in there. Venezia and Spezia both not safe, but you know, um, I think it's a five-way race because all the other teams uh, have already some distance. And as I said, up top. It's within four points, Milan, Inter, Napoli, Atalanta. However, uh, chances, and you will see that in the stats, because chances are fairly in favor of Inter with a whooping 63%. They are much more highly, highly rated. And I think they are the most complete team there, unless they have loads of injuries. I don't see anything else but an Inter Scudetto, unfortunately, uh, this Milan fan has to say. Uh, the next round... Um, sees one derby between Genoa and Sampdoria, probably Italy. Many say Italy's best derby uh, because of the, um, uh, you know, atmosphere and so on. So um, you may want to watch that. I actually think uh, Udine Milan is a trap game for Milan because they never play well at U Udine as is Venezia Juve. Um, I think that is not an easy game, but you know, Venezia need to recover from that bad loss now against uh, Verona. I think the game to watch, despite the scheduling, Verona against Atalanta, those are two really entertaining sides. Napoli can bounce back against Empoli. Sassolo Lazio also has a little bit of a fun uh, written on there. Uh, in Intercalary, foregone conclusion, and Roma Spezia. There was something last season. Yep. Spezia really, really angered Roma last season. So uh, might might be some fun. Looking forward to so that's it from me this season. Uh, I keep now the shorts up, maybe rearrange them a little bit and shoot on the off day uh, tomorrow a Serie A jersey re review, which I'm very excited uh, to be honest. In any case, I want to hear from you what you thought about this round in Serie A. If you agree with me that it's Inter and potentially Atalanta more than Milan and Nap Napoli uh, for the title, would like to hear your opinion. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.